All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Glidden. I am the Vice President of the Minneapolis City Council, and for today, I am chairing our meeting. Um, we often begin our meetings with uh, presentations of resolutions uh, honoring significant events and people in our community. And our first presentation uh, will be uh, introduced by Councilmember Lisa Bender. Thank you. So today we have a resolution which is honoring Community Planning Month in October of 2017. And um, I don't think we have staff here, but we are doing a little um, celebration after in the rotunda. So this is a resolution by the City of Minneapolis recognizing Community Planning Month in October of 2017. Whereas change is constant and affects all cities, towns, suburbs, counties, boroughs, townships, rural areas, and other places, and whereas community planning and plans have helped manage this change in a way that provides better choices for how people work and live, and whereas community planning provides an opportunity for all residents, residents to be meaningfully involved in making choices that determine the future of their community, and whereas the full benefits of planning require public officials and citizens who understand, support, and demand excellence in planning and plan implementation. And whereas the City of Minneapolis Community Planning and Economic Development Department has undertaken the work of equitably engaging with the community as staff prepare an update to the City's comprehensive plan, and whereas residents have participated through open houses, street festivals, digital workshops, artist design activities, and community dialogues, and whereas the month of October is designated as National Community Planning Month throughout the United States of America and its territories, and whereas American Planning Association, its professional institute, the American Institute of Certified Planners, endorsed National Community Planning Month as an opportunity to highlight the contributions that sound planning and plan implementation make to the quality of our settlements and environment, and whereas the celebration of National Community Planning Month gives us the opportunity to publicly recognize the participation and dedication of the members of planning commissions and other citizen planners who have contributed their time and expertise to the improvement of the city of Minneapolis. And whereas we recognize the many valuable contributions made by professional community and regional planners and extend our heartfelt thanks for the continued commitment to public service by these professionals. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the month of October 2017 is hereby designated as Community Planning Month in the city of Minneapolis. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. So now we have a resolution in solidarity with our Somali community members, and so I'd like to invite the mayor who is here for this, Councilmember Abdi Warsami, and all of the community members who are here for this to come join me up front. Thank you, and anybody would like to come on this side or kind of come around, anyone? So I want to thank the community members who are here to join us for um, what is a, a very solemn moment, but one where it is very important for us to show our support and solidarity with those we love, uh, those community members and our extended family in Somalia. Um, I will note that this, uh, this is, is very personal. Um, it's uh, uh, people, uh, it's, it's hard not to know someone who has not experienced loss, and when I say loss, I mean the death of a loved one, the injury of a loved one. Uh, the bombings in S Somalia in Mogadishu last Saturday uh, were some of the most horrific and devastating in decades, and I know many of our community members are just in complete shock. Um, so I am going to ask the mayor if she would like to make a comment, uh, and Councilmember Warsami, if he would like to make comment now or later, I will read the resolution and then I know we would appreciate to hear from our community. 
I mean, the heart of Minneapolis is broken given the violence and the death and the destruction those bombs created in Mogadishu. There is a relationship between Somalia and Minneapolis that is clear and bright and constant and beloved. And we grieve when anyone anywhere is damaged by such horrific violence or killed by such horrific violence. Um, but there's a special pain in Minneapolis now because of the incredible relationship that we have uh, with Somalia and the people of Somalia because there are so many people from Somalia here in Minneapolis. And so the heart of the city grieves um, with the heart of Mogadishu and the heart of Somalia. Um, a strong Somalia is important for a strong Minneapolis, just as a strong Minneapolis is important for a strong Somalia. And so today, as we grieve, as we um, you know, as we express such remorse and such grief and such pain and confusion about how anybody could think that that kind of destruction made sense, we also celebrate the strength of our community. We celebrate the strength of the people of Somalia and the strength of the people of Minneapolis, including and especially the Somali people of Minneapolis. So I will go ahead and read the resolution and then we'll have some comment from community. And Council Member Borsami. <clears throat> this is a resolution supporting the people of Somalia and condemning the attacks in Mogadishu. Whereas the horrific act of terrorism in Mogadishu, Somalia on October 14 has resulted in the deaths of over 300 people and the injury of hundreds more. And whereas the attack has affected the Somali diaspora, which is now grieving the loss of life, many of whom are still unable to contact loved ones and has galvanized the international community, which mourns with them. And whereas Minnesota has the second highest Somali population in the world after Somalia, with an estimated 35,000 residents with the highest concentration of this community in Minneapolis. And whereas Minneapolis has benefited greatly from the cultural, economic, artistic, and social contributions of our Somali community, and whereas Somalis in Minnesota have significant political, economic, and cultural presence, <clears throat> with 500 million in buying power and pay 75 million in local and state taxes annually. And many of our Somali residents have strong ties to family, friends, and business relationships in Somalia. And whereas the city of Minneapolis entered into a historic sister city relationship with the city of Bosaso in 2014, making Minneapolis the first city in the United States to forge such a bond with a city in Somalia. And whereas several countries, including Turkey, the United Kingdom, and the United States have delivered needed medical and humanitarian supplies and assistance to Mogadishu. And whereas the United Nations, Turkey, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the African Union, and the United Nations have strongly condemned the terror attack that targeted innocent men, women, and children. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Minneapolis that the City of Minneapolis condemns the horrific bombing in Somalia, supports the victims and their families, and will work with our broader Somali community to coordinate support and resources to address this tragedy experienced in Somalia and by families throughout the City of Minneapolis and the State of Minnesota. And that the City of Minneapolis recommends that the United States government increase aid to assist in the humanitarian efforts and permit remittances to Somalia. And be it further resolved that the city of Minneapolis urges the president to rescind the travel ban to and from Somalia as it is an inhumane restriction, especially while the country is dealing with a humanitarian crisis. And this is to be signed by the mayor, the council president, and the city clerk. So we have many community leaders who have joined with us today 
Um, and I might ask some of them to introduce themselves and share some words with us. And I am going to start down here with Mr. Hersey. Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Elizabeth. My name is Ahmed Hersey. And um, I was there in Mogadishu when the, uh, the brutal attack happened. I was part of a delegation that was uh, invited by the government to review the constitution. And the first five days, I was just enjoying the beautiful city and the beautiful people. I was updating my social media with images of the beach and the people. Everything was going well. And then all of a sudden, this uh, uh, devastating uh, explosion happened. I went there right after the scene, and I'm still <laughs> I'm still shook because of what I saw. I, I, I've never thought in a million years I would see something like that. It was devastating. It was scary. And I saw a people of need, uh, beautiful people, innocent people. So I uh, send my condolences to their families. I want to thank uh, Councilwoman Elizabeth and the entire council members uh, for sharing their grievance with us. Uh, this is indeed the reasons why we call uh, Minnesota, in particular Minneapolis, home. Uh, also, I want to thank all Minnesotans for their um, constant support in solidarity. Uh, this is a great initiative. I'm glad you uh, took the leadership uh, to do this. We would have expected someone else to uh, do this, but I'm glad it happened, and we appreciate that on, on behalf of the entire community. My wife, Ilhan, couldn't be here today. But we are forever grateful for this, uh, and, 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 and we are happy that uh, to, you, know, you guys are all here. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. I just want to make sure we hear from Sierra Lee, our Minneapolis school board member, and representative also from Senator Amy Klobuchar's office. And then we will hear from everyone else. Mayor Hatches, Council Member Glidden, Council Member Orsame, and all Council Members. Uh, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. On behalf of Somali community of Minneapolis, we are thankful to you, and we are grateful we are part of this city. And thank you very much for mourning with us and grieving with us. We thank you. We love you. My God bless the city of Minneapolis. My daughter, Miski, was with me here today. She's outstanding students, third grade, and I'm proud, and I want to see one day she will be like, like mayor or council members, <laughs> so she's here. So thank you very much. May God bless United States. We love you, all of you. Thank you. And uh, Fartoon Wally. Yeah. So my name is Fartoon Wally. I'm the executive director of Isurun. And it's a Somali-led nonprofit that serves Somali women and their affairs. Personally, I am. Uh, my emotions are too high, but I was suppressing it to really be strong for the rest of the community. So, let me say a gratitude. Um, more often, when tragedies happen, you really see who the real people are who care. Our community have been ridiculed and called them all the names by the book, but. When this tragedy happened, many of Minnesotans really came out both emotionally and right now what's happening. So, Council Elizabeth, I appreciate your leadership. I'm proud that you are my counselor, even though you're leaving, but I appreciate your leadership. And I also thank everyone who's here at the council, the mayor. I'm here only to say thank you. Know that terrorists, doesn't have a clan member, doesn't have a nationality. They're all threat to all of us. Making sure that we support one another, both emotionally, and make sure that poverty is dealt with in not both local and national, internationally. So on behalf of everyone who's not here, we're grateful. And the work starts here and doesn't end. So I appreciate you all. Thank you. I want to thank Kali for being here and talk about his work with youth. Um, thank you so much, Councilwoman. Um, my name is Khalid Mohammed. I'm um, a resident of Ward 6. And I want to thank first the 
um, the entire council members and Mayor Hodges, who was one of the first individuals that um, reached out to me and shared uh, an account that we opened for the victims and such a leadership and seeing that from the mayor and telling my mom who's back home and saying, guess what, the mayor of Minneapolis shared the account we created and she was one of the people that actually shared that account it was was overwhelming for my parents as well who currently right now um, in Somalia. So on behalf of the Somali American community, we're grateful that you are our mayor and also um, the entire council um, Divorce me and Elizabeth and the rest of the council, we are very grateful for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one more. Yeah, my name is Abdi Hashi. I'm a member of the Somali community. I want to thank you all, uh, Chamber of uh, uh, Minneapolis Council, uh, Ferris in uh, Mayor, Basihachi, all members. We're here today to uh, share with you and, uh, what we're feeling and thank you for inviting us, listen to us. Also, we invite whatever you can tonight. We have events. We are uh, talking about what happened here and uh, also is a fundraising. So we invite whatever you can, we invite you. It's the address 312 West Lake Street. It's uh, 7 o'clock tonight. So thank you so much. I will share you that information. Okay. I just want to say, and um, pass this to my colleague, Councilmember Warsami, that this is from the entire council and from the mayor. And we do our best to list each other up and ensure that we are supporting community. I know Council Member Warsami has experienced uh, personal loss like so many others in Somali American uh, community. Um, and as a colleague, we're here to support him as well as our broader community. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Council, uh, council Vice President Glidden and Mayor Betsy Hodges and all my colleagues on the council and to all the city staff and everybody else who's been very supportive. I remember a couple of days ago, I got a phone call from the chief of police, Rondo, and uh, he just called and I, we thought he was going to talk about some issues that we have, public safety and the world, but he actually uh, called to, uh, to, uh, to send his regards and, and his sympathies to the community, and I was very touched by that. You know, when, when this bombing happened, just like every time there's a bombing in Mogadishu, I think about my, my loved ones, my father, my stepfather who lives in Mogadishu right now, and my younger brother who's a trader who travels from Nairobi to Mogadishu. And when the bombing happened, uh, I called my brother and I couldn't get a hold of him. So then I called my mother who's in London and I asked her, how was he doing? And she said, you know, he's fine, he's okay. But we lost seven cousins, seven cousins of yours died in a bombing. And three of them uh, severely injured and they were taken to Turkey. And in fact, um, uh, 60 of the people who have perished are from my mother's kinfolk. Because that area was, has a high concentration of some of the entrepreneurs. Uh, hotel Safari that was the hotel that was the target of the bombing was also owned by members of my, mom, my mother's extended kinfolk. So it touched us and the seven cousins that I lost and the cousins that I injured are people I have never had an opportunity to meet because I've never been back to Somalia for 30 years. And, and that makes you think, you know, should I have gone back uh, in all these years? And yeah, so it did touch me and, and I've been numb for for a couple of days and I call my mom to console her but she consoles me because she's very strong and, and very tough. So it's been very difficult and this resolution means a lot to us because it sends solidarity. Um, you know, the work that the young members of the community like Khalid and Liban have done in terms of setting up the GoFund account. Um, you know, the support from within the country. This bombing has unified the Somalis in Somalia and it has unified the Somalis in the diaspora. And uh, I have never seen such unity because the people do, that were lost, the 300 and the 70 more that are missing and the 300 that are injured, you know, these people were ordinary folk. 
They were not government, most of them were not government officials. They were not soldiers. They were children. A young lady who was going to graduate as a doctor the day, you know, on, on, on the Monday that the bomb bombing took place. The father that, who was already disabled in the war, who lost his daughter and son. The children that were looking for their mother, who was a, a lady who sold milk uh, on, on the street. Uh, you know, this, this is horrifying. And it was not a massacre. This was carnage. You know, this was absolute carnage. This was Somalia's 9-11, as you would say. And, um, and I've been touched by the love and warmth of, of our brothers and sisters in the city of Minneapolis, including Elizabeth Glidden and, and the mayor, Mayor Betsy Hodges, and, and everybody else who, who, who has supported the community and, and who deeply care about the community. So I'd like to thank everybody for their support and, and uh, you know, we shall overcome. So I thank you very much. We, the community, members of the Twin Cities Coalition Justice for Jamar, and families of those who lost their lives to police violence, like Jamar Clark, are here today to stand up and fight back against police terror. We know that Band Aid reforms will not bring the change that is needed for our community. And what we need is community control of the Minneapolis Police Department. This is why we are here today to present a letter to you, city council members, uh, for community control 
We are presenting a letter from families impacted by police terror and demand for community control via a civilian board elected by the police, Minneapolis Police Accountability, Accountability Council. What do we want? Impact! What do we, when do we want it? Now! What do we want? Impact! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Impact! When do we want it? Now! I live in Ward 1. I want community and accountability of the police because we know that funding, giving more money to the police is not the answer. It doesn't take money to shift culture in the police. It takes integrity and courage. We do not want you here sitting by as, as people are killed. It didn't say Jamar, it didn't say Justine. The money's not going to save him that person who died. Okay. My name is Jane McKinley, and I live in Ward 2, and I want community control because I don't want my community members and my son and my family members to be terrorized, and I want them to have a safe place to live. Um, and I've been in public service for 40 years in Minneapolis, and I want them to have the same safety and um, accessibility that I have. My name is Ashley Brown. I'm a community supporter, and I'm here to uh, support our protesters for families because we get a lot of staff and we can count feelings. We don't want another Fernando Castillo, Terrence Franklin, Fong Lee, Marcus Golden, or Jamar Clark. We need police accountability. Thank you. My name is Dawn Jefferson, and I live in Ward 2. I want community control because I uh, don't want to have to uh, wait whether or not I should call the police based on what I think they might do to the people I'm calling on instead of actually serving me and protecting me. My name is Rosie, I live in Ward 11. I want community oversight because I want everyone in my neighborhood to feel safe. Hi, I'm Johnny Johnson, Pastor Johnny Johnson, and I'm here as Jamar Clark's stepfather. And I'm speaking in behalf of his mother for justice for Jamar. The tears don't ever stop when the police go to bed. She don't have to have the rest that they have. We demand justice for Jamar and those who come behind him before him. They need to be held action, accountable for their actions that they bring sorrows to each and every home every day. You know, they work as a, we pay a salary for them, not for them to take from us, but to serve us and protect us from the evil that have went half went forth from their own hands. Okay. Right. I forgot to introduce myself earlier. I'm Loretta Van Pelt and I live in Ward 11. And I'm just going to tell you this. The people are sick and tired of not being listened to. Body cams that aren't turned on after all our tax dollars were wasted on them. We can't even get the police officers to have self-insurance. It is time for the community to take back this building. It is time to take back control of the 4th Precinct, turn it back into the recreation center when it was the way. It is time for the community to take control of the police and not be less control, not half ass control. We are not going to beg to the council.
Thank you, Erica. Thank you, A general Erica. warning to those who would disrupt our meeting. I have advised that this interference with the council's ability to conduct the city's business will be removed. The public may attend and observe, however. Right, thank you. We are starting our meeting. Can you please give that to the clerk? Thank you. Please give it to the clerk. Please. All right, I'm calling to order our meeting of the city council. The clerk will call the roll. Council member Johnson. Here. Quincy. Please shut the door. Here. Council member Quincy. Warsami. Present. Goodman. Present. Fry. Here. Palmasano. Present. Gordon. Here. Cano. Here. Wright. Here. Bender. Here. Yang. Here. President Johnson is absent. Vice President Glidden. Here. There are 12 members present. All right. Our next action is to adopt the agenda. So I take a motion. Please shut the door. Uh, I'll take a motion to adopt the agenda, and then we have several motions to amend the agenda. Uh, move to adopt. Is there a second? Okay, and then we have several motions to amend. The first is a motion by myself to amend the agenda to include under the order of resolutions a resolution supporting the people of Puerto Rico and the people of Mexico and others in recovery from natural disasters. Do I need a second on all these? Okay, second. Uh, can, I'm just going to ask the clerk. Do I have to vote on these separately, or you can read them all at once? And do okay, I'm going to read them all at once, and then we can vote. Thanks. Uh, next, we have a motion. Uh, so that's been moved and seconded. Next, we have a motion by Fry to amend the agenda to delete under the order of introduction and referral calendar the introduction of an ordinance relating to occupancy regulations. That's been moved by Councilmember Fry. Is there a second? Second. All right, that's been moved and seconded. Uh, I'll I'm, move on to. If, you, if I may, real quick, uh, if, if I, we could, rather than moving to delete, um, I would prefer to move it from the introduction and referral calendar to simply the notice of introduction. Oh. Okay, so, um, I mean, that is fine. Do we need any special? Okay, all right. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> so everybody can see I am not... Uh... I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, next we have a motion by Glidden <clears throat> to amend the agenda to include under the motion, order of motions a staff direction relating to sanctuary platform policy proposals. Is there a second? Second. It's a second on that. And then finally we have a motion by Yang to amend the agenda to include under the order of resolutions a resolution honoring joint senior pastors Dr. Floyd R. Sr. and Dr. E. May Beachman. Is there a second on that? Second. All right, second. So uh, we have moved all one, two, three, four motions with a modification to Councilmember Fry's uh, motion. Um, uh, any dis and uh, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Next, we have the acceptance of uh, the minutes of October 6th. Move acceptance. Second. All in approval, say aye. 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 Opposed. And finally, we have referral of petitions, communications, and reports of the city officers to the proper committees and departments. Move referral. Second. Uh, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Um, and as we turn to reports of standing committees, I just want to acknowledge that I am chairing this meeting because our council president is out due to a family emergency. And I know all of our thoughts are with her and with her husband. Um, the first uh, report is of uh, the Committee of the Whole, and I am wondering if I can turn to Councilmember Andrew Johnson, who is the Vice Chair, to read that report and move it. Thank you, Madam Chair. With our Committee of the Whole report, we are bringing forward two items. The first is uh, a local government amicus brief, uh, us joining that in support of DACA programs. 
and the second is uh, directing staff to follow up on recommendations uh, on the city's legislative policy for improvements for reimbursement rates for all non-hospital health care providers. Uh, I will go ahead and move both items. All right, Councilmember uh, Andrew Johnson has um, moved both items on the Committee of the Whole Report. Any discussion? I'm not seeing any. The clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Worsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Next, we have the Community Development and Regulatory Services uh, Report with uh, its chair, Councilmember Goodman. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The Community Development and Regulatory Services Committee is bringing forward nine items for approval this morning. They include land sales in items one and two, uh, business licenses in items three and four. Items five and six are the regulation of short-term rentals ordinance as well as the hosting platform ordinance. Item seven are applications for grant funding for brownfield redevelopment grants, both for deed uh, tax base revitalization and Hennepin County. Item eight are the regular liquor business and gambling licenses. And item nine is an amendment to various outstanding home buyer assistance loans. Uh, with that, Madam President, I'll move items one through five and seven through nine and hold off on item number six for an amendment by the author. Okay, thank you. So um, we'll go ahead and take up the, um, the agenda. Uh, one through five and seven through nine. Any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, uh, clerk will call the roll there. Council Member Johnson. No on five, yes on all others. Quincy. Aye. Borsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. <coughs> Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 12 ayes in the report except number five, which has 11 ayes and one nay. All right. So then we have um, item number six and uh, uh, and I'm going to call on Councilmember Fry, who I understand is the motion on this. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, for those that weren't in the committee, I just want to provide a brief explanation as to the impetus here. Um, so. Having some form of regulation to ensure safety was not an option on this particular uh, matter. It was something that needed to be taken up, one, to prevent lawsuit uh, by hotels uh, that do require some form of parity. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm someone who, as you may know, is, is very much for the sharing economy. Uh, you know, I've authored the ordinance that legalized uh, Uber and Lyft, uh, but there was by law required to be some form of regulation attached to it. And uh, I will also be legalizing uh, companies like Airbnb and VRBO, but there also must be some form of safety and regulation packed in as well. Uh, one, because legally we have to, and two, because yeah, we do want to ensure safety for uh, occupants. Um, and so um, what we've tried to do is, is pass um, an ordinance that would allow flexibility uh, and that would allow a new and innovative business model to succeed um, uh, with as, as few impediments as possible while also ensuring safety. So uh, the, my amendment, which should be in front of you, is to 351.30, and it allows the licensing official to uh, impose a lesser annual fee for a short-term rental hosting platform that lists or will, or will list no more than 150 dwelling units. Um, so in other words, if you've got uh, under 150 uh, dwelling units on any individual platform, the host um, will not be charged $5,000, which is the, the fee for the large entities like an Airbnb or a VRBO. Um, and instead, they will be charged $630 as the fee. Uh, and this is in line with the work that it takes staff to um, complete an inspection uh, and for them to process the, the paperwork. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that this, that this will function well. Uh, but I'm happy to stand for any questions. In okay, Can, uh, so I will take this, if I may, as you have moved the underlying uh, action and then you're moving to amend it. Can I do that? Correct, yes, Okay, you may. thank you. So on Councilmember Fry's amendment, any discussion? I'm not seeing any, so all in approval on his motion to amend. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, then we have the underlying uh, item, item number six. Any further discussion on that? If not, Kirk will call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. No. Quincy. Aye. 
Borsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. There are 11 ayes. Um, next, okay. Uh, next, we have the health, environment, and community engagement report. Councilmember Gordon, please. Thank you, Madam Vice President. The Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee is bringing two items forward for approval. Uh, the first is authorizing execution of a mutual aid agreement um, between 17 Twin City jurisdictions for response to public health and environmental health emergencies. And the second item is authorizing execution of two community solar subscription agreements. And I will be moving item one as it is uh, presented, but item two I have, uh, I'll be moving a substitute to the first um, community solar garden subscription agreement. That's with Rena Sola. Everybody should have that before you. There was a drafting error. I understand it was kind of a cut and pasting error that some of the wrong numbers got put in for the details authorizing that. So I'm moving the Substitute you should have before you with us authorizes the um, agreement with Rena Solar for a term of 25 years for up to 680,000 kilowatt hours. And the subscription will cost an estimated total of $78,000 annually and will be offset by annual electricity utility credit of 83,500, providing an anticipated first year savings of $5,500. And over the 25-year term of the agreement, the subscriptions should generate net positive values of $550,000. Um, the second uh, subscription agreement is as it was presented in the agenda without any changes. All right. I'm happy to take questions if that's a little bit too confusing. Okay, thank you. So Councilmember Gordon has moved um, items one and then a substitute for item number two. Is there any discussion on either one of those items? I'm not seeing any, so the clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Worsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Thank you. Next, we have the Intergovernmental Relations Report, and I have asked uh, Councilmember Andrew Johnson, who's a member of the committee, to give that report. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have one item on our report approving the Metropolitan Council policy positions. I'll go ahead and move that item, and then I'll be moving an amendment to that item as well uh, that is in front of you. It states motion by Glidden Intergovernmental Relations Item 1, and I'd uh, be happy to speak to that. And then I just also wanted to make a note uh, of something I've, I've seen here. Okay, so um, Councilmember uh, Johnson has moved the Metropolitan Council policy positions, and uh, and then why don't you go ahead and move the amendment, and if you want to speak to yeah. that, that's fine. Thank you, yeah, and I'm moving the amendment, which uh, amends to add the following statement, support and increase to grants and operations and maintenance support for regional parks implementation agencies, including the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board, and advanced transit enhancements for West Broadway and the Midtown Corridor. I'd also just like to note, we did have uh, an amendment that I brought forward at committee. I'm not seeing, this is a note to the clerk, that I am not seeing the uh, amended language posted in limbs for that. But if any committee members are curious, that was just around uh, light timing on the Hiawatha corridor and looking for enhancements. And I will put myself in queue just to speak on that, uh, that the addition, Council Member Andrew Johnson, is mentioning was unanimously supported in the committee. I kind of am considering this more a technical change from the clerk, right? Madam Vice President, the amendment moved at committee is in the committee report okay. and then would be included in the full action. Apologies, okay. it is in the committee report. All right. Thank you for the clarification. So then back to Councilmember Johnson's um, uh, amendment. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And then on the underlying action, any discussion? Uh, seeing none, clerk will call the roll, please. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Worsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Thank you. Next, we have Transportation and Public Works with Councilmember Reich. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The committee will be forwarding a total of 
15 items today. Uh, item one is the sanitary sewer service availability charges. Uh, item two is the contract with FAE sales auctioneers and appraisers for services. Item three is the contract with Hiller Auction Services, uh, sale of decommissioned equipment. Item four is the uh, contract with Kimley Horn and Associates for the Hennepin Avenue project, reconstruction project. Item five, I will be uh, moving to refer this item back to the TPW committee and direct staff to work with the communications department to examine options to reduce the amount of external contracting necessary. Uh, item six is the amendment with EMA incorporated for technical services. Item seven is the contract amendment with Chemstone Products to supply and deliver ReadyMix concrete. Item eight is the contract amendment with um, Thompson and Constructions for the construction of the 26th Avenue North project. Item nine is the contract amendment with Tiller Corporation DBA commercial asphalt to finish, to furnish uh, hot mix asphalt. Item 10 is the Broadway Street Northeast uh, reconstruction project. That's a designation of cost, estimate, and setting the public hearing. Item 11 is the 28th Avenue South um, project layout, easement, and limited use permit for the reconstruction project at that site. Item 12 is the grant application to the Minnesota Department of Transportation for 2017 local road improvement program, funding for reconstruction of the 4th Street South from 2nd Avenue North to 4th Avenue South. Item 13 is the uniform assessment rates establishing the 2018 rates. Item 14 is a bid for various water utility materials, and that's a low responsive bid. And item 15 is the water supply update. Uh, Madam Vice President, I move all items, noting the uh, amendment to five, uh, which refers it back for staff uh, work. Thank you. So Council Member Reich has moved the full agenda, noting that uh, motion on five is to refer that back to the TPW committee. Anyone want to take anything off? Discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll, please. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Pano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 12 votes. <coughs> Thank you. Next, we have the Ways and Means Report. Councilmember Quincy, please. Thank you, Madam uh, Chair. Uh, Ways and Means brings forward five items for consideration this morning. The first is a contract amendment with Premier Electrical for a contract closeout uh, for work at the Convention Center. We also have item number two, a contract amendment with Loeffler Construction Consulting for Fire Station number 15. Uh, item three is uh, the 2017 property tax special assessment of delinquent utility charges. Item four is a contract amendment with Metropolitan Council for additional scope of services. And the final item is a grant from Homeland Security for rail and pipeline exercise. I'd like to move all five, five items for approval. Councilmember Quincy has moved the full agenda from the Ways and Means uh, Committee. Anyone wish to take anything off discussion? See none, clerk will call the roll, please. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm sorry, can I clarify an item before I vote? Is, was the, the item on Nicolet Mall being sent back to the committee? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. and that in happened in the TPW. In TPW, but it's not through Ways and Means right now. Right, that's okay. the originating committee. Understood, thank you. Mm -hmm. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Pano. Aye. Wright. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Next we have the zoning and planning report. Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, the Vice Chair, Andrew Johnson, will give the report. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. Member Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we are bringing forward six items today. Two of those items were uh, sent forward to the Council without recommendation. We do have resolution on those today. So why don't we uh, move uh, items, uh, and I'll do separate motions for those. So why don't we move items one, three, four, and six, and then we will uh, separately uh, move items uh, two and five. Okay, so Council Member Johnson has moved, uh, what was it again, items one, one three, three, four, and six. six. Okay, one, three, four, and six. Any discussion on those items? Anyone want to take any item off? And, and 
Can you want to speak to one of those? Yes, I'd just like to real quick speak to one of them. Item number four, it's just been- Go ahead, a, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's been just a really remarkable project. If uh, any of you have had a chance to dive into the details, this is a transit-oriented development in my ward that uh, just goes above and beyond in so many ways from improvements to the public realm with a plaza, addition of public parking, greening up and down the street, free bicycle storage for folks uh, who are using the light rail station. It has affordable housing without any sort of affordable housing trust fund subsidy built in to the project. And yet it has been such a complex project to pull off with so many different jurisdictions involved with it. So just a big shout out to the developers and their team for being able to make this happen. It's widely supported in the community and uh, it's one of those projects that I know once it's done, I think we're all gonna be really proud of the outcome. All right, uh, Councilmember Goodman. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I also wanted to comment on item number one, please. Item number one, go ahead, please. Um, this is an action today that will allow for an interim use permit for 15 temporary beds to be put up for the winter shelter program that we partner with the county on in the city of Minneapolis. 50 new beds will be provided for women and children um, in the on the border of the um, 6th and 7th Ward at First Covenant Church. This would add 15 beds on the border of the 7th and 5th Wards to um, Catholic Charities, which means there are 35 beds left to be sited in the city for winter shelter. Uh, my understanding is the city and county are partnering to find a place for each of those 35 beds, so we'll have 100 extra shelter beds online for winter shelter this season. So I just wanted to update everybody on where we were at. I know a number of my colleagues have been working alongside me on the encampment issue and getting folks out of the cold and into shelter over the winter is a top priority and the county is working to fund these and the city is working to cite them. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. Um, not seeing any further comments, so clerk will call the roll on items one, three, four, and six. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Wursami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 12 ayes. All right, next we um, are turning back to Councilmember Johnson with items two and five. Thank you, Madam Chair. For item number two, I'll go ahead and move that forward uh, with the staff approval. So we'll go ahead and, I'm sorry, we'll go ahead and move the staff recommendation forward on this item. And what about item number five? Uh, and then item number five, uh, I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Clerk, if that requires a separate motion, uh, but I would like to then move that forward with staff recommendation as well. Madam Vice President, if both are moving forward as recommended originally by staff, we could put okay. those together. Okay. All right. Thank so you. we have items two and five. Anyone wish to comment on those or have discussion? I'm not seeing any. So items two and five have been moved. The clerk will call the roll, please. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Yang. Aye. Vice President Glidden. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Thank you. Next we have notice of ordinance introductions. And uh, so those are items that I will uh, read. Item number one is an amendment uh, to municipal minimum wage ordinance. Glidden gives intent, notice of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the city council the subject matter of an ordinance amending title two, chapter 40 of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances relating to administration workplace regulations clarifying business size determination for minimum wage ordinance. And number two, uh, Reich gives notice of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the city council the subject matter of an ordinance amending title 15, chapter 385 of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances relating to offenses miscellaneous in general, adding a new section 385.40 restricting takeoffs and landings of unmanned aircraft for special events. Item three is relating to the civil rights ordinance and Glidden gives uh, intent, notice of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the city council, the subject matter of an ordinance amending title seven of the Minneapolis code of ordinances relating to civil rights, updating the civil rights ordinance. 
uh, chapters 139, administration, and chapter 141, administration and enforcement. Item number four, city coordinator, uh, race and equity division ordinance. Glidden gives notice of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the city council that the subject matter of an ordinance amending title to chapter 21 of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances relating to administration, city coordinator, adding a new section creating a division of race and equity within the city coordinator's office. Item number five, limited entertainment ordinance. A. Johnson gives notice of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the city council the subject matter of an ordinance amending title 20, chapter uh, 520 of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances relating to zoning code introductory provisions amending the definition of limited entertainment. Six, wine licensed class definitions and allowable entertainment ordinance. A. Johnson gives notice of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending Title 14, Chapter 363 of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances relating to liquor and beer, wine licenses, amending regulations related to license class definitions and allowable entertainment. And then uh, this was uh, changed to a notice of intent regarding occupancy uh, regulations ordinance. Uh, and this would be then a motion by Fry to, uh, or uh, Fry gives notice, excuse me, of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending Title 12, Chapter 244 of the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances relating to Housing Maintenance Code for first reading and referral to the Community Development and Regulatory Services Committee, amending, <clears throat> excuse me, provisions related to occupancy. And uh, next we turn to resolutions. And the first on the agenda is a renewable electricity resolution. And uh, I understand Councilmember Fry would like to speak on this. Councilmember Fry. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my aide, uh, Heidi Ritchie, uh, has been working on this topic for what seems like about a, a year now. Um, you know, in, in April of this year, uh, she reached out to the Sierra Club about, about making Minneapolis one of the many cities nationwide to join the Sierra Club's Ready for 100 campaign by passing a resolution committing to the goal of transitioning our city to 100% renewable energy by 2030. And that's consistent with uh, the goals of our city, our climate action plan, and the uh, Clean Energy Partnership. Uh, is went through a, a very extensive review from the Sierra Club, um, met with many different council members, city coordinator, public works, finance, property services. I mean, this is pretty extensive. And, and uh, input was sent out uh, from uh, to Excel Energy, uh, Centerpoint, uh, met with EVAC as well as SEAC. Uh, we presented the resolution to SEAC on September 6th, although SEAC lacked the quorum to vote on finalized comments um, at the October meeting. Uh, and ultimately provided the off they ultimately did provide our office with a series of draft recommendations and those were incorporated into um, the resolution uh, and so uh, you know I uh, was hoping to get this done months ago uh, and I did have uh, concerns about uh, moving this forward in proximity to an election is it seemingly inevitably po politics get involved but I was reassured by the uh, by the Sierra Club. Um, in fact, the Sierra Club explicitly told us that this was one of the most forward-thinking and thorough ready for 100 resolutions in the whole country, and they said that this was uh, hopefully going to be a, a model going forward. Um, on October 12th, they sent us an email that says, we just got off the phone with the ready for 100 national campaign team, and as requested, they will be sending a letter to members of the city council letting them know that the resolution is strong, meets all our campaign criteria, and has been vetted by our teams. So uh, this was pretty extensively vetted, and with that reassurance from uh, the Sierra Club, uh, we did decide to proceed. Um, a couple days later, um, a couple days ago, uh, just prior to you know this meeting, uh, I received the call saying that uh, that not only would the Sierra Club not be supporting it, but they would be opposing it at this time, and uh, it was very clear. Then they explicitly stated that it was because of politics. 
Um, and so while that is disappointing, um, I, I do feel that this is a very important issue. In fact, I think it's the social justice issue of our generation and the first person has already died because of climate change. Uh, and so um, to get to that, you know, kumbaya moment that I had hoped would happen today, uh, I will um, be delaying it until after the election. And that's explicitly what they wanted was it for it to be delayed until after the election. Um, and it's, uh, while it's disappointing, I think it's better to get the kumbaya moment and put the environment ahead of, uh, better ahead of politics. Uh, so I will be delaying this resolution, uh, until after the election. I want to thank, uh, my aide Heidi Ritchie, who has done an extraordinary amount of work on this. Uh, I want to say thank, uh, many members of the Sierra club, including Alexis Boxer and others who have been staunch advocates, um, uh, such so much so that the Sierra Club actually drafted a press release for this with quotes from both me and the mayor prior to their opposition, which was odd to say the least, but it did happen. Um, and so um, we will I will be moving to to delay this until post post election. All right, well, I will take that as a motion to postpone on the council agenda. Um, and so that is what is bef before us. Okay. And I'm not seeing further comment. So I think for that, we can just take a voice vote. Okay. So on approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Next. Sorry. We have a 2017 Community Planning Month honorary resolution. Um, and uh, so I will move approval. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at the clerk for my direction. <laughs> and he's maybe talking to himself. Um, and so I'll move approval of this item. Discussion, see none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Next, we have our support for Somalia resolution. Discussion, see none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Next, we have a resolution which is support for Peter, uh, people of Puerto Rico and Mexico resolution. Discussion on that. Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, next, we have a resolution honoring uh, joint senior pastors, uh, Dr. Floyd R. Sr. and Dr. E. May Beecham. Uh, and so I will move approval of that discussion. Seeing none, all, did you want to okay. uh, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, next, we turn to motions. And this is a motion relating to the sanctuary platform policy proposals. Um, this is a motion by myself directing staff to review and provide initial response to policy proposals collectively entitled sanctuary platform and to present a report at the future meeting of the intergovernmental relations committee and other related committees of the city council. And there's a full version of the motion that was passed out and is available to the public as well, which lists all of the policy items that were part of the sanctuary platform presented to the city council on September 22nd by a coalition of community groups. So I'll move approval of that discussion. Seeing none, all in approval, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And uh, with that, we have uh, an item. We would adjourn then to room 315 for the purpose of discussing the litigation matter of Muhammad Osman versus Officer Christopher Ryder and the city of Minneapolis. Um, and prior to that, I will ask if there are any uh, announcements that anyone wishes to make. Council Member Yang. Um, thank you, Madam Vice President. Um, I, I know that a lot of issues uh, presented here uh, are pretty heavy, and um, I wanted to lighten it up, and I hope not to be insensitive by uh, doing so. But um, you know, I just wanted to congratulate the North High uh, Polar's football team for their fourth uh, consecutive season uh, of regular season uh, being undefeated. And so I uh, just want to give a shout out to the North High football team. Thank you. Any other announcements? I'm not seeing. So uh, move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? And all in approval, please say aye. 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 
opposed, we are adjourned to room 315.